Hey, what's up guys? It's Eli, and I am here in Fredericktown, Missouri at Brady's Jiu-Jitsu Club. We had a seminar today, so big thanks to Brady's Jiu-Jitsu Club for having me come out today and seeing all my good friends out here in Missouri, including this guy right here, Chris the Punisher Petty, um, amazing MMA fighter. Uh, and uh, he was kind enough to come up and visit me today and, and attend the seminar and, and be my training partner and demo partner. So uh, I'm going to show a couple things that we worked on today because this is a headlock series that I like a whole lot. Um, I actually put out an instructional that covers some of this, but it's kind of, we're going to go even like beyond the instructional. That essentially, he's turtle and I'm here kind of sprawled out. Now this means, what, how did we get here first of all? Maybe he was going for some kind of reversal. He came up top from the bottom position. Maybe I sprawled as he shot in. Uh, probably unlikely against this man if it were me. But somehow he's gotten to this position, I've gotten to this one. There's different configurations of how my hands could be at this moment. So I could be um, both in front of his shoulders, both around his trunk, one in, one out. And that along with the fact of like how his hands are connected to me will determine what's gonna have to happen next. So we're gonna look at some different options from like three different scenarios. Number one, we kind of came here and I was able to block in, and this is probably off of like a snap down that I did. So I'm in here by his neck on this side, and then I'm here by his uh, inside of his tricep bicep area like this on this side. So um, the thing that I'm gonna look to do from here, we're gonna do this, I've shown this before, it's a, a called a Dave Schultz headlock uh, set up to an anaconda choke. So essentially what's happening here is I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna connect my two hands here palm to palm, I'm gonna scrape his arm up so his bicep comes close to his face, and then I'm gonna stick my head back here in this hole that it created under the armpit. Now I'd like if I get the choke just right off of that here. If I turn the corner here, active toes and squeeze, and then I get the choke right there, that'd be phenomenal, and it can happen. If it's not happening though, and I really get over to the side, sometimes that will initiate the roll that I'll go into for this kind of gator roll or this anaconda like this where we roll over and across. Now from here, I'm actively keeping his arm up and separated. I'm keeping this hugged in tight like this. I'm walking my hips in this way, and then I'm gonna bring this knee in like a curved knee, not only pushing my knee down like this into his arm, but also pushing his arm down this way with it. So I'm pushing this here, and then I'm gonna lead this hand like this, slide this one through until I get my karate chop hand into my elbow, squeeze in, and then I get that full expression of the anaconda choke right there. So one more time from this angle, as we get here, I'm blocked in by the neck. Maybe this were, were off of a snap down like this. And I gave over my two hands. I turn the corner here this way, try to get the choke. It's not working for me. I roll out from this direction. And then I'm going to bring my hips in, push down with the leg. This hand is up, thumb facing toward me. I get that rear naked choke configuration. And I squeeze and I get that anaconda choke like that. Now, what complicates matters sometimes is if he actually were able to get a connection to one of my legs. So the first one that we're going to look at, we're going to look at what happens if, uh, let's switch sides here, if as he was shooting in, as he was shooting in like this here, he got in and his head's going to be on the outside first. So this happens sometimes when he comes off, off of a side control type of escape or whatever. I'm still going to have this hand here blocking down here by his neck and I'm going to get inside like this. Now I'm going to go for like a guillotine style grip. So I've got this wristwatch style grip here like this. This hand is going to come toward his tricep and I'm going to double block like that. As I'm doing that, I'm expanding the space here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick my leg up and I'm gonna step my foot here on his quad, and that's gonna cause me to be able to fall and flip him over like this. I'm gonna roll up to this neon belly style position. I'm gonna be up on my forehead. Now I'm gonna go for this guillotine style grip like this here. I squeeze, hopefully I get that choke right here. There it is. Now, it's possible that in this position, he reaches up and he tries to hand fight with me and pull that hand away. He wants this, so he saves his neck. So when he does this, so I'm going to fight, 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 and then I'm going to let him have that. Once I let him have it, I scoop my arm inside like this here. So I've got this kind of cattle catcher position here. I've got this underhook on his arm. I'm going to post up, and I'm going to drive. I'm going to lift a little space here and drive my knee right in that, that pocket there. As I do that, this leg here is going to come across his body, and I pull him into this pocket. So now I've dropped him in to this configuration. This foot came up, so I hug. I bring this up. And now I've got my triangle right here, squeeze, and then that locks in that reverse triangle like that. So from a different direction here, as we go, here like this, and he's got his head on the outside. We'll talk about head on the inside in just a moment. So from here, I've gotten him in on this front headlock. I get my good configuration like this. I open that space here. I come in, I step on his side here, flip him over. I post out on my head. So I come up here, this knee on belly type position. I try to get my guillotine choke. Hopefully I get that and that solves the whole thing. If he hand fights with me, he pulls the hand down and out. I'm gonna pick him up, make that space underneath his back, slide my knee up and through, pull him up and across. 
so that this leg comes up. Now I lock it in, hide this foot behind his back. I can maybe get the straight arm bar from here if I'm not getting the choke, but if I'm with the choke, I'm gonna try to go here, push his head down, squeeze, everything's very tight. I get that reverse try and talk about what if his head is on the inside. If his head's on the inside here, different things that we can look to do. What I would like, I wanna to try to kill this grip so that I can just kind of switch out and be on his back somehow. But if he's really tenacious with this here, like that, I'm gonna throw this kind of uh, overhook or this wizard on like this so he can't really funnel me up as easily. I wanna to try to fight here on his grip. I wanna pull my knee up and over this direction. As we go to do that, now I'm gonna post and I'm gonna back step to here. Once I back step over and across, I like to initially grab this ankle here so that he doesn't immediately start picking me up and I can kind of like uh, buy myself a little bit of time. If I hang out here for as long as I have right now talking, he would have already picked me up and dumped me. But what I want to do is I want to get inside here and get on this crotch lock. So I go in here, get this like high crotch waist kind of type grip here this way. And then I'm going to post my knee inside underneath him. I'm going to flip him over my leg. I'm thinking his spine over my femur. When I go to do that here this way, it drops him up and over. And again, my leg, because of the way he was holding on, falls into this position. So now once here, I'm going to lock this up here. And now I'm going to squeeze the body, hold, squeeze like this, and get that weird backward reverse to be a team or a triangle like that. He managed to have his head on the inside, which is a good thing for him. He can really funnel my leg up, toss me over and be on top uh, if I'm not careful. So I block here, back this way. I'm gonna push his uh, wrist down, try to get my uh, knee clear over here like this. I'm gonna back step over, get in on the crotch lock. I wanna flip him up over my leg, pull him this way, pick my leg up here this way so I see my foot. Now I can cross this up here, hold the body, squeeze, in for that triangle like that. All of these are different options from that front headlock kind of position. There's lots more that exist too. I can go in for 10 finger chokes, I can go for Darce chokes, I can go for different anaconda setups, back takes, all kinds of stuff. I've probably got other stuff on other videos, but these are some that we experimented with today um, and that we've been playing with. So tell me what you think about them in the comments or whatever, as long as it's something nice. Don't say mean stuff to me. And uh, I appreciate you being here, brother. Again, uh, Chris the Punisher Petty. Watch this man's MMA career. He's a stellar performer. Uh, thank you again to Brady for having me out of Brady's Jiu Jitsu Club in Fredericktown. If you're ever in Fredericktown, Missouri, come check this place out. Appreciate you guys watching the Jiu Jitsu channel.